Hey boys and welcome back to another Bleach Brace Over video and today, today we're going to be showcasing slash reviewing the brand new Confi on World Power Hikone, the version 2 Hikone, the Confi or Truce version. Now this card is actually very, very good and before we do get into the review, if you guys haven't realised yet, we will be changing up quite a bit. Now normally when I did do reviews for characters, I just take them into an IZ room, showcase the damage, showcase how fast they can clear content, etc. and I call it a day. In this new way that I'll be reviewing the characters, I'll be going a lot more in depth into the characters or talking about different things I didn't always talk about and also just give example builds what you can do with the character and hopefully this is a better way of showcasing slash reviewing said character. So if you guys do like this new way of showcasing slash reviewing characters let me know in the comments below and show some support by liking the video. That being said let's get into the video showcasing the brand new Can't Feel Your World Hikone. So looking into the character, Confi World Hikone is a power no affiliation character with the Sorry for Killer ability and also does have a 12% recharge link which is always good. With strong attack characters you always want them to have recharge because it just means you can get your strong attacks off quicker which means you have more invincibility frames which means you can do more damage because in this game if you stack strong attack damage links you're pretty much one shotting and you're wasting time. So recharge is definitely the meta and that's pretty much the main reason why almost every character nowadays gets a recharge link so it's actually very nice that he does have it. So addressing the elephant in the room, we all know there are two powerful power characters in the game, especially ones with Sorry for Killers being Bankai, Confi World Shinji, and also Spirit Society Byakuya. And those two being such powerhouses definitely lessen the hype on this Hikone, but I really don't think it should. Hikone definitely holds his own and actually really does compete with them. If anything, there's only a few second differences between their clay time, and you really shouldn't be disappointed about pulling this character. So now let's talk about the stats. Hikone actually does have a fairly decent set of stats. Now, Stats in this game don't really matter too much because of transcendence, but I do want to go over it anyway. So Ikoni has the following set of stats. 1111 stamina, 645 attack, 349 defense, 353 focus, and 803 SP. Now if you want to keep count, and you can see right there, Hikoni is the 8th highest SP character in the game, which is actually fairly impressive. Now we could talk about the other stats too, but honestly speaking, they really don't matter, especially with transcendence, right? But I just wanted to point out the SP because he does actually have a fairly decent one, even even his stamina is actually pretty high for an SP character, so I can't really complain about that. It just means he has more, a tiny bit more survivability. Um, it's not too much. You could still get one-shotted by a lot of enemies in Cobb and stuff like that. But I just wanted to point it out. Looking into Econius skills, he actually does have a fairly set of decent skills. Going from the top to bottom, we have Berserker plus 20%, Bruiser plus 20%, Debilitator plus 5 seconds, Devastation plus 40%, Frenzy, Havoc plus 20%, and Increased Status Element Chance against Technique Attribute Soul Reapers. So skill-wise, in a sense, it's kind of average. This is what you come to expect with a lot of characters. He doesn't really have anything that makes him groundbreakingly OP. That being said, he's still very good, don't get me wrong, and his skills are still good nonetheless. I'm not really complaining whatsoever. So breaking him down, Berserker plus 20% is what you want to have on an SP character because it does increase your strong attack damage by 20%. Very good, especially with a character that is a 12% recharge. If you only have the character 1 out of 5, you will take this extra damage any day of the week. Having 5 out of 5 doesn't really matter too much because you'll be one-shotting at that point, but always love that extra 20% damage you can't really complain about that then he has bruiser plus 20 percent this is increased no attack damage by 20 percent it's okay in my opinion for an sp character is kind of a throwaway because you're mainly using their strong attacks you're not really doing too much damage on your nat string so that extra 20 percent damage really doesn't make that much of a difference but i guess it's just the norm for these kind of characters the ability for five plus seconds is actually very good because he can weaken on all of his attacks so if he does weaken the enemy they're going to be weakened for seven seconds love to see it no complaints there then he has devastation plus 40 percent that being increased special move damage by 40 percent always love to have that means he can nuke very good against Guild quest enemies just nuking stages in co-op. Always love to have that. Frenzy increasing the amount of hits he does on his strong attacks is actually uh, pretty much the set standard skill. If they don't have this, then they're pretty much not usable. So it actually would have been strange if he didn't have it. So no complaints there. Then he has Havoc plus 20%. Not every character does get Havoc nowadays. It is still a lot more common than it used to be. But hey, it's good that he has it. It means his range on his strong attacks are actually very, very good. Love to see it. You're going to see that in the gameplay as well. He actually has very, very good range. And then the last skill, which is unique to this, he can only increase status on a chance against technique attribute soul reapers. So what this means, if you are going against tech soul reaper characters, I know it's very specific, but so that's what you want to do anyway. You want to take him against tech soul reaper characters. If you hit them, there's a very good chance you're going to inflict the weakening, especially on his second strong attack, which is a vortex. That second strong attack, if anyone does survive it, it's pretty much almost guaranteed to inflict the weakening, which is actually very good. So again, going back into it, so he also has debilitate for five seconds. So if you do inflict the weakening, which you do have a very good chance to do so, 
they're going to be weakened for 7 seconds, meaning they're pretty much doing no damage to you. And then the last skill that he has being Sprinter Plus 2 just means he has that extra bit of mobility that the other characters just don't have in this game. Now, unfortunately, if you do compare this version of Ikoni to the Mind one, the Mind one also has Sprinter Plus 2, so they both have free flash steps. Unfortunately, this version didn't pick up the long stride the Mind one did have, which is definitely a downgrade in a sense. Now, it doesn't mean he's worse than the Mind version. I actually think the Power version is better, but it definitely would have been a lot better if this version of Ikoni did have the long stride. It probably would have made him a bit more unique compared to the Shinji and Byakuya. So, it's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. It doesn't make him bad whatsoever. It just would have made him a bit better. So now let's talk about his gameplay and his strong attacks, right? Because that's the main thing about this character. So the gameplay you're seeing right now is just me running through IZ, me running through the events I could bring him into using different builds. Honestly speaking, very impressed with this character, right? And I'll talk about that in the end when I do my conclusion. So this version of Ikone has a pretty set standard normal attack string. That being said, it is the best normal attack string possible for a ranged character, so I really can't complain. This normal attack string is similar to the Tokinada, it's similar to the Fierce Battle Kisuke. It's actually a pretty good no attack string even for characters that are nad based you kind of want them to have that no attack string so for an sp character can't really complain there isn't really much to talk about because he is an sp character you don't really care about his no attack string but it is nice that he did get a good one now, going into his strong attacks, his SA1 is a beam forward, which is actually very, very good. Honestly, one of the better things about this character. Being an 870 width and a 3000 length strong attack with melee collision with 120% magnification, it means he can do a lot of damage, and in certain situations, you could actually nuke the whole room with that first strong attack. That 3000 length is nothing to scoff at, right? That is basically free full screens in front of you. Obviously, it's very linear, but that being said, if you do line up that strong strong attack you can do wonders with this attack so a very good strong attack one probably the best strong attack one you could get in the game and i really do like it going into his second strong attack being a moving vortex is honestly the weakest part about his kit being a 60 percent magnification into an 8 percent magnification it means it doesn't do the most damage and in certain situations it potentially will only clear one or two ways if you're lucky that being said it is not a bad strong attack and it doesn't make him bad in my opinion it definitely could have been better if he got the 9 60 AoE in front of him, but honestly speaking, I really can't complain, especially with the strong attacks, the first and first strong attack that he did get, so the second strong attack isn't too bad, plus if you do keep in consideration the fact that he can actually inflict weakening, and also has increased chance to do so, if anyone survives that second strong attack, they're pretty much going to be weakened, if you're using against a boss in the Senkamon or in co-op, that SA2 pretty much guar almost guarantees, obviously there's a small possibility you don't weaken them, but it pretty much guarantees that enemy is going to get weakened. So in certain situations, that SA2 is actually very good. So I like it. That is SA2. Now let's talk about SA3. And that is a distant AoE, a 1,170 radius AoE in front of him with 120% magnification. An amazing SA3. Probably one of the best SA3s in the game, if not the best SA3. It's a massive attack in front of him. So anything in front of him is pretty much going to die. Even stuff that's off your screen. This AoE, and we're going to talk about the visuals in a minute, is kind of deceptive. Um, it really doesn't look like it has that much distance, but it actually does. Play with this character, I've noticed that I'm killing enemies I wouldn't thought I'd be hitting because of the visuals of the character. So, SA1, perfect. SA2, pretty good. SA3, perfect. So, having these set of strong attacks makes this character very, very good. Having the free flash steps makes him very fast. With the Havoc, he's an amazing character, and that's definitely what you want with this character. He's very enjoyable, and with the small time I have been playing with this character for the last day, I am really liking him. Obviously, recency bias aside, I think he might be one of my favorite characters nowadays. So since we talked about the attacks, now let's talk about the visuals, because that's definitely one of the things, right? Almost every character in this game can clear content. It's about what character looks fun to play, and this character, in my opinion, is really fun to play, especially because of the visuals. Um, having this, like, red slash black aura is actually fairly impressive. I do like it. Kind of gives me some vibes of Visor Ichigo and stuff like that with his holification. So his first strong attack with the Hikone, um, he stabs the floor, and then a massive beam comes out. Pretty good. Very fast, you can animation cancel it. I like it, right? Going into his second, since it is a vortex, um, he basically stabs the floor again, I believe, and then charges it up and then pushes a, a wave of aura in front of him. 
that being the vortex, right? You actually can't cancel out that first part of the animation if you are wondering about that. So that is going to be a drawback, but but you will have invincibility frames, so it doesn't matter that much. But if you do use that second strong attack right before an attack's going to go off in Epic Raids where you don't have that invincibility, you might actually get attacked if you were wondering. That could be, I guess, a downside about this character. But in my opinion, it's very small. It's almost never going to happen. It's not that big of a deal. And then his third strong attack kind of attacks in two waves. The first part of the animation is him doing a massive power up. And then the second part are meteorites falling on the floor right in front of him. Now, if you do try and cancel out of this animation and you do it where he does the power up, that second part with the meteorites falling, it will happen. But since you cancel out the animation, no enemy will get hit. So do keep that in mind. But the visuals for this attack is actually fairly impressive. I do really like the effect of the meteorites falling. It is kind of cool. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago the visuals of his attack especially the third strong attack is kind of deceptive in a sense where it doesn't look like it's hitting at a certain point but you are hitting them so do keep that in mind a lot of times when i use that third strong attack i wouldn't think i hit said enemy and then i end up wiping out that wave and the enemies behind them which is kind of funny so an amazing third strong attack looks impressive too obviously i feel like it could have looked a bit better with more effects around it just to make it so i know what i'm hitting but i don't think it's a bad thing i like the looks of his strong I like the look of his natural and I like the look of the model. I'm very impressed with this Ikone, especially considering the fact that this is the first time we're seeing this version of Ikone in any type of media. If you don't know, because I probably should have mentioned at the start, this design of Ikone, uh, we never saw in the light novel. We only saw a description of what he looked like. So this is actually fairly impressive, very cool. And I'm wondering if we ever do get Confiwood animated in the future, would he have this exact same design? I wouldn't be surprised if they change it up just a tad bit and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't so so yeah either way I'm impressed with this character so now let's talk about the accessories that you want to use on this character. Now for many of you out there, you already have your accessories built, you know what to use on him, so this part isn't really for you. But let's not forget there are many new players starting the game, there are new players that just pulled the character, and they're wondering what accessories do I use on this new character to make him as good as possible, and I'm here to give some suggestions, right? So starting off, since this Hikone is a SP character, you want to focus on building up his SP. So any of these accessories will work and do wonders for your account, that being the Zeta pill, the fortification Bill, Masanga, Katakorin Alpha, Tension Tie, and the Nerd Glasses, all with 30% SP. If you don't have 30% SP, 20% SP will also do the job. So going from left to right, the Zeta Pill is actually a pretty good accessory, and the main use for this accessory is the fact that you can hit hidden enemies. Now with this, you only really want to use it on stages where you know there are going to be a lot of hidden enemies, and you only use it if you can do enough damage anyway. This accessory is pretty much a speedrunning item. If you want to clear the content quick, you don't want to waste your time waiting for the enemies to unhide and just appear out of nowhere. You want to make sure you have the Zeta Pill just so you can use your Soul Bomb, you can use your Strong Attacks and kill the enemies, and just basically do the quest as fast as possible. The fortification pill is pretty much here. Um, it's almost the best accessory to use an SP character. It's base stats being 30% SP, 30% focus and minus 30% stamina is actually very good and it's a small trade for that extra damage. Also, if you do get 30% SP as the second trait, that's 60% SP right there. This accessory is very good, especially for the fact that it isn't a golden accessory, so it's almost accessible by everyone. You can evolve freestyle accessories, you can get them from tickets, a very good accessory, and I pretty much always use this accessory on every build that I do. So this accessory right here, especially if your character is 2 out of 5, is a must-have. The next accessory being the Misanga, um, this is pretty much to increase the amount of damage you do with killer effects. So only use this accessory in guild quests or in a stage where there are only Soul Reaper enemies because at that point you're not wasting any damage. The extra 30% killer effect does add up, it is actually very good and this accessory is pretty much meta in guild quests if you do decide to take Ikone into guild quests, which I don't see why you wouldn't. He is actually a very good character since he can weaken. Weakening is by far the best stats element to use in guild quests, so having the Misanga is definitely going to be good, especially Actually, we do have 30% SP on it. Now, every character does have access to a 20% strong attack damage accessory. This Hikone, since he is a no affiliation character, means he has to use the Katakoran Alpha accessory. Again, with 30% SP, it makes it do wonders. This accessory right here is pretty much the go-to for every kind of build, similar to the fortification pill. If anything, those two should always be used no matter what build you're going for because it means you do the most damage possible. 20% extra strong attack damage and 30% SP as a second trait is very, very good and 
every build that I use in this gameplay, I use those two accessories. So very good accessory, almost a must have for this character. Next up, we have the Tension Ties. So the Tension Ties are very, very good accessory, increasing your Soul Bomb damage by an additional 100%. Basically, it doubles the amount of damage you do on your Soul Bomb. Very, very good. Now, this accessory is kind of replaceable in a sense that you don't always need to use it. For co-op content, you definitely want to have it since the bosses have a lot of HP. So having that extra bit of damage on your Soul Bomb definitely does help. For single player stuff, uh, since you have weakening on your Soul Bomb, you don't really always need to rock the Tension Tie and you can replace that with a Zeta pill, especially if there are a lot of hidden enemies in that certain stage. Now, one thing to mention, if for some reason you are lucky enough to have this Hikone 5 out of 5, you don't really need to rock the Tension Tie in any type of content. Uh, having the special 5 out of 5 does enough damage anyway. You can pretty much replace that for another accessory. However, I will say if you do want to nuke an entire stage of Cobb, whether that's IZ or Extreme Cobb, you definitely want to have that Tension Tie because you can literally wipe out an entire wave, like seven waves of enemies plus the bosses with that Tension Tie, having 5 out of 5, having the Weakening, you can definitely do that uh, with this character. So obviously not everyone could do that. Not everyone has a character 5 out of 5, but just in case you do, that's an option. And then the last accessory to talk about is the Nerd Glasses. Again, with 30 minutes P, will be a lot better. The Nerd Glasses nullifies range resistance by, I believe, 40%. So it's actually pretty good. Now, you only ever really want to use this in Extreme Carb, and that's basically about it. You never, ever see this accessory being used in any type of content outside of Extreme Carb, or for some reason you want to bring this character into a floor that it has range resistance in Senkamon. That's basically about it. It's a useful accessory to have, not needed. Honestly, even in Extreme Carb, you don't even need to bring it. It, but it does help so I do want to mention it in this video. So now it's time to talk about the best links you can use on this Hikone. Now Hikone fortunately is a power character so it does mean he has access to a lot of good links and we will be talking about that now. Uh, however if you don't have these links and you don't have most of them the main build you want to go with with this character is free 12% recharge links. Those work, they do the job but there are better links out there just to make your gameplay a lot better. So speaking of those links, first one we have is Senkai Aizen. So this character is free to play. You can get him by being Senkamon. This is one you should get first. These Senkamon links are very, very powerful and definitely someone you want to have in your account, especially this one right here, the Power Aizen. Increasing your strong attack damage by 20% and an additional 20% extra damage if you do have full stamina, is very, very good. I use it a lot. If I ever take this character into Guild Quest or Senkamon, that Senka Aizen is definitely going to be the first character linked to this Ikone. Then we have Tag Team Omida. Tag Team Omida is the only power character in the game to have a low stamina damage link. Very good. Love to see it. If you do want to go with low stamina damage build in Epic Raid and stuff like that, he is definitely going to be your go-to. In addition to that, and I kind of contradicting myself right now, we have the Resurrected Noitora. This Noitora only has this one you do resurrect and so do keep that in mind he originally was a 20% strong attack damage link which in itself is okay honestly you don't really want to link strong attack damage links but he did pick up an additional low stamina damage plus 24% so 24% low stamina damage 20% strong attack damage basically if you combine them that's 40% extra strong attack damage that you're doing very good link especially again if you do decide to bring this character into epic raids now, the next link is the Senkai Ichigo link. This one is the score Ichigo, if you don't know, by the way. He is a strong attack recharged minus 12% link and also a last ditch 100 link, which is actually very good. So, if you have this character linked to you, if you die, you're going to revive. You're going to have all your strong attacks back. You can do more damage. You have the recharge. It's a very good link, in my opinion, especially in Carp, if you know you're going to die a lot. Because in Carp, enemies can pretty much one-shot you out of nowhere. So, I really do like this link. Senkai on Ichigo will be returning in a couple of days when we do get the new tower, so stay tuned for that. Then we have the Fierce Battle Okiora that just came out recently. If you do have him, main reason for linking him to Ikone is just because he is a 14% recharge. That extra bit of recharge just means you get your strong attacks back faster. Love to see it. Same goes for Halloween Grimjow. He is also a 14 recharge. That's literally it. You just want them because they're a better recharge link than the normal 12% recharge links. Then we have Frenzy Byakuya, again, another free-to-play link. If you do have those Frenzy tickets that we get every month, you definitely want to consider getting Byakuya because he also is one of the better links to get. He is a strong attack damage plus 18 link and a strong attack recharge minus 10 link. So it's actually very good. Recharge, strong attack damage. Love to see it. Both of them combined just means you're having the recharge and you're also doing more damage. Very, very good link. Thousand Year Blood with similar to the Halloween Grimjot and Fierce Battle Okiora. She is just a 14 recharge. That's literally why you want to use her. No extra 
link, just 14 recharge, extra recharge, love to see it, that is why she's here. In addition to that, we also have TLA Rukia, who is also a 14 recharge, but she also does have that freeze duration minus 55%. Now, that second trait isn't too good, the freeze, it might help you if you get frozen, let's be honest, but the main reason you're doing that is just for that 14 recharge. And then the last link, and potentially the best link to use on this character, is the Tag Team Byakuya Resurrected. He is a 12% recharge link and an additional 16% strong attack damage. Being a power character, having access to that link is very, very good. Almost every build should have that. The go-to build, in my opinion, would be 114 recharge with the Tag Team Byakuya and the Frenzy Byakuya. That is a very powerful combo. You do a lot of damage, you're getting the recharge. Very good combination of links. And that is the link part of the video. If you got them, make sure you do link them to the Sikone. So overall, Hikone is definitely a good addition to the power attribute. Yes, he has some tough competition. It probably would have been better if he was a different attribute. But let's not complain about what we don't have. Let's look at what we do have and appreciate it. And what we have is a very fun character. Hikone has an almost perfect SA1 and 3. SA2 is still good to this day in today's standards. Having the extra flash steps just means he can clear faster than both Shinji and Byakuya. And also, the fact that he can increase the chance to inflict the weakening just means he's a safe character to use because if you use the strength, attacks if someone's getting hit by that strong attack they're going to get weakened which just means he has that extra bit of survivability and also is helping out your teammates because you are weakening them it means they can also do more damage so that was it hope you guys did enjoy it let me know what you guys think about this icon in the comments below are you enjoying him do you like him i'm curious to know these videos do take a while to edit i'll probably spend a couple of hours editing this video alone so if you want to show support make sure you smack the like button let's try and aim for at least 300 likes on this video that being said that was video hope you guys did enjoy it I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.